Welcome back. You're watching Economic, Economic Review this morning. Abraham, just before we went on break, the question was there, for how do you think the current regime views smaller banks in the economy? Because we do know that is where the industry can sometimes start being porous. Yeah, when you say small banks, you mean by tier. There's tier yes. one, two, three. Yes. Now, of course, the, well, whatever problem we have is industry-wide. But what determines who survives and who doesn't is your capital base. So yes, if, if, if people, the people who have to recapitalize, of course, the, 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 the so-called smaller banks. But then again, it also depends on the quality. Maybe their quality of debt is not as bad as we think. Yes. Because see, we're dealing with an average. We've not gone into the individuals. So what will help everybody survive or, or, or die across the board is your level of uh, non-performing loans vis-a-vis your capital, and how much of this you can take. Yes. If, if all of it came true, can, can your capital take it? If the answer is yes, you survive. If the answer is no, either you recapitalize or you perish. It's as simple as that. Yes. Yeah. Finally, as we clear this conversation, the current governor has been awarded the, 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 the best uh, CBK governor twice in a row in the Sub-Saharan Africa. Yes, you are proof or you have a talking point? No, it's true. I mean, Even the uh, fact that most, most bank bosses are saying, well, this industry is now overly regulated. It's not overly regulated. It is regulated. The, you know, there's nothing like overly regulated. Yes. The guy is, is using the law. So the, the uh, word over comes from what? Yeah. yeah, he simply, maybe we're not used to, to, used to, you, to implementing the law in, yes. to, the law in full. The, yes. guy, the guy operates on either it's black or it's white. And that's why you see he's, he's, he's given, they've got that title twice. Because he's done a good job. I mean, in this particular time, to, to steer us and keep the industry alive to this point, I think he's done a fantastic job. And he, he, as I told you, the, the law is robust enough. It just needs implementation, ruthless implementation. So when you do it ruthlessly is when the word over-regulation comes. Yes, yeah. pretty much. All right, let's move into the last issue that we have for you today. Well, it's more good news for counties that recently saw their share of revenue increased to $409 billion in the financial year. 2021-2022 as it can now utilize the 17.4 billion grants included in the bargain unconditionally. Now before this latest treasury announcement, the funds were originally meant for specifically healthcare, roads and education. Now treasury, while giving an explanation to the change, added that counties could now utilize the funds for issues like salary payments and other development projects instead of relying on the national government for filling their physical gaps. Treasury says Okuri Yatani is also optimistic that now the change will improve counties' absorption of funds as most were shying away from the grants due to their conditionality. Mm. Okay, let me start with you, Arnold. Well, is there anything that we can read further into this relaxation by Treasury to let the counties use the 17.4B in whatever way they design? Ah, it's a, it's, a, it's a double-edged sword. I think we had a discussion recently on uh, how counties had been given leeway to use bonds to finance their budgets. Yes. And now we're looking at another move from the government to give them more leeway from moving from uh, conditional grants to unconditional grants. Now, this will primarily depend on the governance of these counties, simply because some counties look like they have their act together, and that will be good for them because we've been seeing so many issues to do with uh, county governments, settlement of payment for suppliers, uh, health care issues, and so on and so forth. So in one uh, end, it looks like it's going to be a good move and it, it will actually assist uh, the trickle-down effect of uh, government money down to the counties. Now, on the flip side, in the event there is mismanagement, then you'll have situations whereby, uh, you know, at the moment you have counties who, who you actually use half of the entire allocation on payment of salaries, which is which is actually absurd. So removing of that condition is actually a double edged sword. I think the counties who have their act together will actually maximize on um, other costs, but the counties who are yet to get their act together we may actually see a situation of probably wastage, increase of salaries and so on and so forth. So it's a double edged sword from where I see it. It's a double edged sword. Abraham 
But, but we have to interrogate though. And, and, and this is coming at a time when the government is saying, well, we don't seem to have money to spend this year. I mean, we're gonna go back and continue to borrow. But now, Abraham, they're also saying that they have been relying on the national government to sort of fill in some of the fiscal gaps that these counties have been experiencing in their budget allocations. Do you read the Treasury sort of trying to navigate a way to remove the burden of sort of financing these counties when they run out of money through removing this condition, the conditions out of these grants? I don't know. I don't know what to make of this because either way, it's Treasury that has funded it. Yes. So they can give, what, give it whatever label they want. Yes. It's, it's, it's your money and my money that is going there. But uh, I'm, I'm a bit uh, worried about the removing of conditionality. Okay? Yes. Because the moment you remove a condition on money, the tendency to, for it to be wasted is very high. Because if you give money to me, do whatever you want, I'll keep it. Because that is one of the ways I can use it. They, they, can, they can spend it, they can create fire, fire, like phantom projects, they can do anything. But in terms of that money translating to value on the ground, those chances are near nil. Why they did that, I don't know. I don't want to speculate. But is it a good move? No. That's why we have votes. Every money that comes from Treasury should yes. go with a specific mandate on it. Yes. If it's not spent, it goes back. It's as simple as that. Because this kind of trend is very dangerous. Because it's a cut blush. You just say, do whatever you like. Here's the money. We are waste that is we are, we are wasting. <laughs> that money is going to get wasted. That is the, the long and short of it. In fact, if, if someone was to do a study of what happened to that money, I'm sure that's what will come up. But, but be as it may, it, the, the dice has already been cast. So that money is gone. But I think as, moving forward, we should not do that. We should not do that again. Yes. We should not. All, all our money should be, this is the money for developmental, as per your budget, these yes. are the lines, this is what you said you do, this is what you're going to do. So this is your salaries, these, these are the, the, the votes. So if you run out of them, you, you, you stay like that. Because also, why should they come back to you when they are the ones who give the budget. The only way they can come back to you is through a supplementary budget, which must be justified. And the supplementary budget, can be you can say yes, you can say no. But now giving the money that is unconditional actually allows them to fix messes, which, which, would, which they would have had to think harder to, 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 to fix. But this now, now you've given them a very easy out. Because I had, had a problem, now you've given me money that are free, I'll sort out my problem first, rather than develop my county. Abraham, I want to come back to you because at the timing of this announcement, because I think that's where the conversation comes in. And also, let's, let's look at it critically in this sense. Well, prior to this, they were actually meant for specific purposes. Health, education, what? And then you like to think that because the national government is preaching development in the county levels, then it will make proper sense to retain that money there. But there was a report that was also released by Treasury just the other day when counties were talking about having a cash crunch within their governments. This conditional grants, I know, was sitting there at the CBK. Nobody was going for this money because of the specific conditions that you were forced to meet before you get it. So, is that not okay? Is it not? Why are you removing these conditional grants for, for them? Is the Treasury trying to find an easy way to increase absorption of this money to the counties without properly thinking of how they're going to spend this money? Yeah, give and take. I think uh, it could have a political connotation, which I will not delve into. Yes. Uh, but I think it was it was actually a very prudent move to have those conditions on those grants, simply because it would enable you to have proper accountability. You, it would have specific uh, the the funds would have specific functions within those particular counties. Yes. And the strange thing, the strange thing about counties is that you'll always hear of uh, health, which is, essential, which is essentially part of the conditions which are, are put on these grants. From time to time, you'll hear health workers at county level not having been paid for quite some time. Or you will hear suppliers who have probably supplied the counties who haven't been paid for years. So removing of that condition is, is it, it, it simply doesn't make sense on face value. But at the same time, you remember the counties who are actually getting their act right. 
and that's why I mentioned for the counties which are getting their act right, this could actually spur better growth and it could actually spur trickle down effect. But unfortunately, the counties which are getting their act together are so are so few, and unfortunately, we are likely to see wastage uh, of these funds. And I feel that the conditional position of these funds was a more prudent measure as far as management of these county funds are concerned. Pretty much, Abraham. And, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, I know. Yeah. Just clear on that as well. Yeah. So basically, I think I think Treasury has very little room to maneuver as far as allocation of funds across the economy is concerned. If you look at the kind of borrowing which is going on, we have a two billion dollar facility which has just been approved by the IMF, and you realize funds which come from the IMF are list with austerity measures so i think treasury has very little room to maneuver and i think the removal of those conditions is probably just a way of trying to find more room to maneuver as far as allocation of funds is concerned in the economy Abraham, the, 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 somebody asked this question do we lack a legal framework from the national government to sort of see what is going on in the counties. Now, point in case, a report released by the Control of Budget just the other day also did say that some counties are actually breaking the Public Finance Management Act of 2015 that says you cannot spend more than 35% on salaries. Most of them were spending it. Another report comes and says that out of the 47 counties, only three, Abraham, have been able to meet their own source revenue, which we do know what it is right now. Just make sure that the businesses that are conducted in the counties are paying their taxes. That is not working as well. Is there no more, no more reason for us to say, introduce more conditions to the money that is going to the counties, as opposed to saying, well, remove them? And what does he mean when he says, that this will increase the rate of absorption of money to the counties. Is that not negating himself? They've not been coming for it because there have been conditions, but now since we remove them, they will come for them. Is he opening ways for mismanagement? See, the PFM Act has been revised severally, and it's, yes. it's, it's, it's a very robust act. Yes. That's what controls how we, how, how, how the whole budget process and what you can do and what you can't do. And what they are doing is actually in contravention of the PFM. So, so I was saying again, it is about the policy, not about the lack of <laughs> regulatory framework. Yes. That one is there. The PFM is robust enough to control the counties as is. Yes. Now, when when you say we talk about absorption, yeah, that has been a big debate in bank, in not banks in government for a long time. But you see, which is better for money to be absorbed to the wrong cause or money not to be absorbed? I would rather money is not absorbed. Because when it is not absorbed, it goes back. So all you have is delayed. A delayed project or delayed something, but if you're happy about the absorption rate, and and not co and, and not looking at what it was absorbed for, then we, we could be opening an avenue for wastage. And that's what probably might, might happen here. So I think we need to think hard and fast. That at the end of the day, let's address the question of why is there no absorption? Yes, that is the question we need to ask ourselves. Yes, is it? And and, and part of the reason of, of of low absorption is the is, is some of the laws we have. The, 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 the Public Procurement Act in, in, in specifically. Because if you don't time it properly, some of that those processes can take an entire financial year. You see? Le, or, or, or let's say you want to bring a partner on the, or under PPP. That can transverse several financial years. You see, and it's, that's why you see like the PPP Act is under review. Because some of those things are part of the reasons why there's low absorption. So I think we need to put our mind there rather than making it easy for people to absorb. Because when you make it people easy for people to absorb, then it gets absorbed in the wrong in the wrong place. Money we don't have. So in a nutshell, let's stick to the law as is today. That money has to have a label, and it's either used for it, you use it the way it's supposed to be used, or it goes back. The the issue of simplifying that can only come if we revise the the regulatory regime around what is, is creating barriers within the, the, the absorption. Yes. And that's only the, the, specifically the two acts, the Public Procurement Disposal Act and the PPP Act, those two. And I know already the, the Public Procurement has been reviewed and I think continues to be reviewed. PPP Act is under review at the, at currently. So that we, we shorten some of, those, some of those steps, we remove some of those unnecessary steps, we shorten some of the time frames that are that are put there and the hoops and the approvals and pre-approvals and, and counter-approvals that, that have to be go along that because that creates fatigue. So you find that's why you see some of those people refuse to go for those grants. Because somebody does not want to go through that agony. 
you see. But then again, it's money you need. So because when money sits at treasury, it doesn't help us because we want that money on the ground yes. in the project. Yes. We're doing whatever we want. We want it in health and, and on all the goals that we want. Because develop, but developmental, development, the developmental uh, finance and, and is, is, is a process and is a painful process that is guided by law. So unfortunately, the laws we have are, are good in terms of controls, but are not, they're, but they're not the best in terms of efficiency of delivery. All right, uh, and I'll clear for us this conversation uh, this morning in terms of the recent uh, treasury um, stance change in moving some of these conditions from the grants as well. And uh, you mentioned something really, really critical on that area as well. That, well, some of the same same conditions that have been put on these grants were addressing the critical areas in some of these counties. Talk of roads, talk of public health. And, 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 and education as well. We've been seeing schools, uh, we've been schools that don't have even budgets to build classrooms. Let's say what it is, Arnold. It is Treasury trying to find a soft landing spot in terms of, well, looking like they are actually improving the disposal of money to, to the counties. Seems like it, seems like it, because I think our counties have governance issues. And I think there was a misunderstanding of bringing down uh, funds to the county level. I think that, that there was a massive misunderstanding of that. And that's why, to some extent, this poor governance and this mismanagement of funds. So as I, as I alluded to earlier, it looks like Treasury have very little room to maneuver as far as uh, management of these funds is concerned. And that's why they probably moved to uh, remove those conditions uh, which have been placed uh, on those funds. I think those conditions are necessary. I think if they are properly uh, implemented uh, on the ground, we won't have issues like uh, health workers not being paid, uh, schools not having funds. So I think we need to marry governance issues with uh, management of funds as far as public, uh, management of public uh, funds is concerned. Pretty much, Abraham and Arnold Gusale. Thank you very much for taking your time to be part of the Metropoles of Business and I'm sure Friday edition. We gentlemen, we appreciate you. Abraham, thank you very much for coming by. Most welcome. Pretty much. On that note, we actually come to the end of the show. I'll see you Monday for another edition. Have a fruitful business weekend.